Hey everybody and welcome back to Jim's Garage. In this video we're going to be looking at Nginx. It's both a web server, one of the most popular, and also can be used as a reverse proxy. Now in all my videos I use traffic, but in this video I'm going to show you how we can set up that web server and how we can route traffic from basically Nginx to any container that's sitting behind it. We're going to be doing that with SSL certificates and I'll show you a process that's repeatable for anything you want to put behind it. Now I am aware of Nginx Proxy Manager, NPM, but I don't really like that product because of all the security vulnerabilities that are associated with it. Plus, that's kind of a wrapper over the top, and technically, you don't need it. If you want to use that, obviously, that's fine, but on this, I'm going to be covering the bare basics with Nginx. So, we'll hop over now into VS Code, and we'll have a look through all of the configuration files. So, for this video, I've created a new virtual machine. I've installed Docker. I've put Portainer on it. And that's pretty much all that's on there at the moment. You can see here that we're on 200.117 and the only container we've got running here is Portainer itself. So to get all of this working, there's a few things we need to do. So I'm first gonna talk through the Docker Compose file and then I'll talk about the specific configuration files for Nginx and CertBot. So as you know, with my traffic videos, that CertBot is basically built into traffic. It's also built into other reverse proxies such as Caddy. And I'll be coming on to both things like Caddy and HA proxy later on down the line. But basically to get this up and running, what we have here is a, again, a multi-container Docker Compose stack. The first one here is CertBot, and the second one here is Nginx. Now we're gonna have to run this one first, and this one is the one that's gonna pull the certificate. Now, as you can see here, I'm using Cloudflare and I'm not going to be covering any other DNS providers. But the important thing really here is this certbot slash DNS dash Cloudflare. There's basically different containers for each of the most popular domain registrars. So if you go to the certbot Docker website, you'll find links to the most common domain registrars. And you'll need to just basically substitute that here. And you'll also then need to change some of the commands down here. But as Cloudflare is pretty popular and it's been with all of my videos so far, I'm just going to carry on with this demonstration. So the first thing really we need to do is to run this container with some variables. Now the variables we need are basically this cloudflare.ini file and you'll find that just down over here. In this cloudflare.ini file, you want to put in your Cloudflare API token, which I've showed in my previous videos. You simply need to create an account with Cloudflare, buy a domain, and then once you're in the Cloudflare dashboard, you can create an API token. You want to make sure that you set that to be able to edit the domain name that you have available to you. And once you click OK, it will generate a token, something like the one on screen. Once you've got that token, paste it into here, save this file, and then you can continue. You're going to need to supply the email address that you signed up for your Cloudflare account with. And then the key thing really is this dash D here at the bottom. And that dash D doesn't have to be a single domain. So for example, what this is going to do here is it's going to pull a wildcard certificate for anything jimsgarage.co.uk and that's probably the right balance of convenience for a home lab but if you wanted to you could be prescriptive and you could add say for example another dash d and then you could put in something like i don't know webserver.jimsgarage.co.uk and then put another one in dash and then it could be a game server for example but i'm just going to do a wildcard certificate for now just because it makes life easier for administrating your home lab Next up, we have the Nginx container itself. And I'm simply pulling down the latest version of Nginx. I'm exposing ports 80 and 443, which are common for unencrypted and encrypted traffic. And I've got some logging enabled, and I've also got the Nginx configuration file. We'll go through that in a moment. And then importantly, I've got this slash certs folder. So what we're doing in the first container with CertBot is, it's gonna pull down some certs and it's gonna stick them in this folder here. We'll see that in action later on. And then Nginx is also going to have that folder mounted so that it can make use of those certificates. Now, to begin with, we need to run CertBot first on its own, pull those certificates, and then we can spin up Nginx to use those certificates. If we do it all at the same time, the certs aren't going to be ready. Nginx won't be able to serve it up. Now, very similar to traffic is the notion of the Docker networks. So here I've just created this Nginx-proxy network. You'll notice in my other videos I've got 
one called proxy. So just to try and avoid any confusion here, we're going to create that first in Docker with a sudo docker network create net nginx proxy. Set that to external true. And that means that basically we've got the proxy set on this network. And I'm going to use an example where I spin up IT tools, which I've used before, where we put that also onto this same network. And what that means is it makes it very simple for Nginx then to serve up as a reverse proxy IT tools. And we can do it simply by doing a proxy pass. I'll show all of this later, referencing only the container name. So let's have a quick look now at the Nginx configuration file. Now, this will be a brief overview because there are literally hundreds of different configuration parameters for Nginx, but this should give you a good A plus score on Qualys Lab scan, and it should show you the process we're gonna need to replicate to get this up and running. So the main bit here really that we need to look at is this HTTP section here. So Basically what you have within HTTP, so if you're serving up HTTP traffic, you have what are known as server blocks. So you'll see here between this purple parenthesis and this one down here, we have a server block. And then later on, we also have another one. We'll come on to that in a moment because it is fundamentally different. Now, what this is doing is a bit like traffic. It's saying, listen to port 80. And here it's saying location slash. So basically anything that hits that. Now, this is what's known as sort of a, a default server block because it's saying anything that hits this, it's going to serve up the HTML file that's in here. And that's just the default generic welcome to Nginx. But if you actually had a real website, you could put it in this slash HTML folder and it would then serve up that website instead. So here basically it's going to display the default message. And also then after that, we specify all of the SSL parameters we want for the server. So anything that hits it without a URL, i.e. just comes to this domain on the slash, it's gonna take and pick up all of these configuration parameters. So it's gonna listen on port 443, which we know is HTTPS. It's going to use the certificates, so those certs that we'll pull in a moment when we spin this up. It's got the SSL parameters for serving the certificate up. It's got some SSL session timeouts, caches, and shared tickets. These are predominantly security settings. And then obviously here, we see things that we're more familiar with, things like the SSL protocols, etc. So TLS version 1.2, 1.3, the Cypher suites, and also things like the HSTS for strict transport security. Now, I'm not going to go a deep dive into that, and you can turn on different Cypher suites as and when you want to. You can limit it to just TLS 1.3, for example, but you get what we're doing here. Each time we create a service, we want to create a new server block. And so we see that down here as well. I have basically copy and pasted this, and for every service that you're going to have up and running, you simply paste in a new server block. So basically everything after this section I've highlighted in blue is the same as what we've just reviewed. However, the fundamental difference here is you can see that we specified a server name. So in this instance, I've created the name ittools.jimsgarage.co.uk and you guessed it, that's gonna spin up IT tools later on in the video. Now, what we're saying here is whenever it sees something trying to come to IT tools, it's gonna to say anything that hits that because we've got a slash, just basically anything, we do a proxy pass and we're going to pass that to IT tools. Now, remember I said this is on that same Docker network. So down here, we've got the proxy set on Nginx proxy. And if I have a quick look at the IT tools, you'll see here that I've stripped out all of the traffic labels. Obviously we're not using traffic, but I have put it on this network here, this Nginx proxy true. So when that spins up and it hits this location, because it's on that same Docker network, it can use the DNS name within Docker itself to route traffic through to that container. So hopefully you've understood that. Let's now get on to pulling a certificate, deploying Nginx, and then putting something like IT tools behind Nginx. So make sure that you've got this sort of folder structure set up. You can obviously tweak it to your liking, but we wanna have this sort of certs folder here. We need the Cloudflare any, and we want this Nginx configuration file. So now that I've navigated into this folder here, what I'm going to do is a sudo docker compose run 
and then I'm going to run certbot. So what this is doing is basically pulling out part of the configuration file because as I said, we need to run certbot first. So hopefully if I hit return, what this is going to go and do is pull a certificate using my credentials. So it doesn't have that network, so it's created just this default network. Don't worry, that's disposable. It's now pulled down the container. It has complained about the cloudflare.ini file being overly permissive. That's not a breaking issue. It will still pull it down, but you probably want to change that to 600 just to remove that error. Now what it's doing is that DNS challenge. So this is using DNS challenge, not HTTP. So you don't need any ports forwarded. And here you can see that the output of that request has been successful. So the certificate is now saved. We've got the full chain and the private key. And this will automatically be set to renew in three months. Now you will have to actually run certbot each time that happens, but I've disabled the force renew so that it'll only actually pull down a new certificate when you need it. So now if you look in this certs folder, you should see it's created this hierarchy. And if you want to see your actual certificates, you can see those in live. I can't actually see them here because I'm not logged in as permissions, but if I do a sudo dash I, navigate to the folder we were just in, and inside that folder for live, you can see I've got this Jim's Garage domain. And if we go in there, we can see now the certs, the chain, the full chain, and the private key, which is what we need to serve up for Nginx. So now that we know that we've got a valid certificate, there's one last thing we need to do before we spin up Nginx. And if we actually have a look in the Nginx configuration file, you'll see here that we need to create this DH parameter, so the Diffelheimann parameters. So what we need to do there is basically copy this command here, and we want to navigate to the right folder. And in this instance, if you see the mapping here, we'll want to put that into this certs folder. So if I CD into certs, I'm then gonna paste in this command. It's gonna then go away and create a new prime for that salt. And once that's completed, we should be able to then spin up the container because it will find this here that it needs. If you've got a really old machine, 2048 bits gonna be fine. I've just put 4096 so people don't get irate in the comments. So after almost dying of old age, that's now completed. And that's the last bit of the puzzle we needed to get this up and running. So now if we change directory back up a level, we should now be sat within the Docker Compose level. Let's just do a check. Yes, we are. Now, if you remember, we also needed to create that network first hand. So if we do a sudo docker network create, and then we called it nginx dash proxy. Let's just double check that. Yeah, that's correct. So now if I hit return, that's created that network. And we should be in a position now where we can do the same command we've done probably a million times sudo docker compose up dash d. Now that should go and pull the nginx container and then it should be able to put it onto that network. It gave us a little error here or at least a warning just because it detected that the other container that certbot within the compose file already exists and we know it does so we don't need to worry about that. Now if we go and check in portainer you'll see here that we've got the nginx up and running. So if we have a quick look into the logs hopefully everything looks like it's working. Now, because I've spun this up, it hasn't found the host and the upstream for this Nginx, but we don't need to worry, we'll come on to that in a minute, but it says the configuration is complete and ready for startup. And I've just placed this on the URL of nginx certbotjimsgarageuk I've added that record into my pie hole and pointed it to the IP address of this server, which was at 200.117. Now, fingers crossed, if I hit return, there we go, we've got access to the website. Now, it might be worth the example in mine where I've got the IT tools. You might wanna remove that if you're just testing this out first, because sometimes it can complain that it can't find that upstream server and it won't actually display this message. So just for this purpose, I've taken that block out, I'll put it back in a minute. But the most important thing is if we click here now, the connection is secure. Let's see what the certificate says. So it says here that it's the 18th of February, it's basically 10 to 11 at night, and it's just been issued, which is correct. So we know that we've just pulled down a valid cert, and we know that Nginx is now using this cert. 
perfect. You've now got a website served with Nginx using a valid HTTPS certificate that's been pulled from Let's Encrypt using CertBot. So let's now take this a step further. We've configured it as a web server. Now let's configure it as a reverse proxy. So we're back in the terminal. Let me just clear that. And then I'm going to go back to the underlying folder structure for IT tools. So in here, we'll do a sudo docker compose of dash D. If you want to see more about this application specifically, go and check out one of my previous videos. But here we can see that we're pulling this container down. It started, and again, the critical thing is it's now sat on that proxy network here. So that looks like it's up and running, but obviously in this configuration block now for Nginx, what we want to do is add in the label I deleted before. So that basically looks like this. We've got that original block up here, which is serving up the Nginx website that we've just seen. We've now got this second block here, the crucial part having that server name IT tools. Now you will want to add this just like in any of my traffic videos. Again, add that into your pie hole or whatever your DNS resolver is. And then make sure this proxy pass here, this crucial bit here is the container name of the container. So here, for example, you can see it's called IT tools. Therefore, when it goes to and finds that website, it's going to proxy pass it to IT tools because it's on that same network It's able to use that. We don't need to put in any IPs or ports. It does it all for us. So I'm now going to save that. And unfortunately, not like traffic, you need to restart this. If we head now back over to Portainer, we should be able to go to the containers. This cert bot here, this Nginx one we've just done, you can see IT tools is running. And if I just hit restart on this Nginx container, that should now load up that new configuration. And if you wanted to, you can actually exec into a container first. So for example, this Nginx one, and you can do an Nginx T that will actually validate the configuration files to make sure that the syntax is okay. So we could do that before, obviously copy my example, it should work. But if you wanted to test future ones before you deployed this, this is a way that you could do it. So now that that's respawn up, we should be in a position where if we hit refresh on that website, so that's that IT tools here, see it? If we hit refresh, bingo, we now get IT tools. And if we click on the certificate, you'll see that it's using that same certificate that we were using before. Perfect. And now if we go back to what we had before, that Nginx website, if we hit refresh, we've still got our website being served. So now we've got the proxy, basically proxying traffic to IT tools, but we've also got the web server element serving up web pages. And everything I've showed you today is replicable. So you could have multiple websites all being served by Nginx and you'd put that under different sort of slashes or subfolders. And you've also then got lots of different containers you could serve up just using those different server blocks. So let me know what you think of this in the comments below. In terms of it being a reverse proxy or at least a replacement for traffic, I'm not going to be doing that. But in terms of having a web server, there's a reason why it's one of the most popular web servers. It's very responsive, it's very lightweight, and it's quite simple to use. You'll often find Nginx behind many of the most popular websites in the world. So what do you think? Are you going to be using this as your reverse proxy or are you going to be sticking to traffic? Now, don't worry, I will be checking out others like HA Proxy, which I believe is the most popular and most extensible. And I'll also be checking out Caddy as well. So stay tuned for those videos. But in the meantime, if you've liked this video, please give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care, everybody.